Salutations and good morrow everyone, welcome back to another Grounded video where today I'm going to be going through and I'm going to be walking you guys the top 10 things that I believe you guys should start grinding out right now to get yourself ready for the next update that could be coming out in the next couple days or within a month from now for you guys to get in, do a public test server and start testing out all the new things. But before that update hits, I want to give you guys some time to get out there and start grinding out some items because this new area that's being added in this section that we are looking at right now is going to be bringing all sorts of new challenges, all sorts of new bugs, maybe some new building materials, new milk molars, new scabbies, all sorts of things that always get added whenever they update the game. So let's go over that top 10 list right now. But if, before we go and do that, make sure you guys hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave some comments down below of other tips that you guys think will be super helpful. And maybe I'll make a video on it and give you guys some shout outs. But here we go. Let's start off with number one. And that is make yourself some lights, make yourself some torches. Going through and making yourself some torches is actually going to be super helpful for you. I wouldn't suggest making slime mold torches. They don't last very long. They are the easiest to make, but they don't last very long. Maybe a minute or two in game. This is kind of a waste of time to build. Making yourself regular torches is probably the bet that you're going to want to go down. I will warn you guys though that making yourself torches is going to be a little bit of work. There's items that need to be ground out in order to get it. And also you could go through and get yourself the torch plus by spending 1500 raw science. Do you really want to do that? That's completely up to you. If you're late game, I'm assuming you probably already have this, but if you're still early game, this may not be a viable thing for you to do, or you may just not want to do it all in all. And I understand that. So if you don't want to make regular torches and you want to make torch pluses, go get the upgrade. If not, just make these torches and you should be okay, depending on on how much time you plan on spending in these darker areas. What darker areas am I talking about? Well, think about it. In the last update, we got the Black Ant Hill. The Black Ant Hill is a notoriously very dark area. It's only lit up in some parts because of a base that's inside of it. I highly doubt we're gonna get a base inside of an ant hill, and then the following update, they're gonna put a base inside of a termite hill. That is a lot of the same. Now, could they do it? Probably. Is it gonna look the same and be all lit up? Probably not. So think about it like that. You're probably going to need light in order to explore all these new areas that they're going to be adding and so far what we have seen from the small bits of gameplay for the next update is that that the termite hill is actually super dark now so getting these things is going to be helpful now i will give a little quick shout out obviously over to the firefly headlamp the firefly headlamp is an excellent choice for another set of gear that you can go through and make it is a heavy armor that has the same defense as the antlion wide brim but you're going to be removing any ability for you to get any sort of armor set perks so be careful with that one but you could still make it, maybe keep it on your quick slot at the bottom, swap back and forth with some number keys, and make it so you keep your gear on whenever you're fighting, but pop this on whenever you're running around. Because let's face it, once it's dark, as long as there's a little bit of light, you tend to be able to fight things not a problem. And after you've practiced fighting termites for a while, you'll probably get to know their attacks pretty well and be able to perfect block them. But that is lights. The second thing I think you guys need to go out and start grinding out right now is make yourself some bombs, make yourself some brat bursts, make yourself some splat bursts, make yourself all sorts of them. Why? Think about it. They just added a brand new thing into the game where you go through and you can blow up rocks and it causes map changing events like a shovel falling or you hit something with a hammer and a handle falls over or you have rocks inside of the black ant hill that you throw rock that you throw bombs at blow them up and get access to new areas and this is most likely where we're going to be finding secret things like scabbies like mega milk molars like raw science and possibly even rotten gear we know from looking before through the different uh, construction menus that inside of the crafting menu when we scroll all the way down in here there is a rotten black ant shovel that's in here you can go through and find it all you want to but there is a rotten black ant shovel which means we're going to be getting more rotten gear added to the game and this would be a great place for them to hide some of it think about it inside of the red ant hill right now or the western ant hill as it's known there is a set of rotten bee armor who's to say we're not going to get another set of rotten armor or rotten tools that are over in the termite area that's right over there so going out and getting yourself a bunch of bombs is going to be helpful now let's talk about grinding out the items that you're going to need for bombs right because bombs are kind of a pain in the butt to make right because you need ant eggs and you need fungal growth now fungal growth actually is pretty easy now that they updated the, the game you can fight small things over in the haze and get fungal growth get a ton of it pretty quick actually so fungal growth not that big of a deal 
But what is a big deal is the red ant eggs. So what my advice to you guys would be is to make yourself a workbench that's right outside of the western ant hill. That way you can run down, grab the eggs, and come right back out and make them. Because the eggs hatch so freaking quickly, you need to make them fast. So run down, grab your eggs, run right back out, and make your bombs. I would say probably keep about 10 of them on your character. If I had to make an estimate on how many to keep, I would say keep... Well, a stack. So whatever your large stack size is, whether you've used your milk molars in order to up your stack size, or if you haven't and it's you know six or eight um, and that's your max stack size, then just go with that. Get a full stack. You probably won't need very many more than that, but just in case, get yourself some bombs because they used a lot of them in the last update. They're probably gonna keep it ongoing in this next update. Now, number three, all right? Number three is a little Don't bit more tricky, right? Number three is... Kind of a little bit more common sense for your character to go through and get, but what it is, is getting yourself food. And I don't mean get yourself food using the oven. No, don't use the oven. The oven makes great food, don't get me wrong. The oven makes fantastic food, but the oven takes forever to make anything with food, okay? The oven takes forever to make really anything in the game it's going to take you time to go through and get all the items for that when you can go through instead and get say water fleas or grubs or aphids or weevils grab their meat and throw it on a roasting spit and i don't mean get one roasting spit i mean make 15 roasting spits 10 to 15 roasting spits per person will be super duper helpful for this next update why am i telling you to use roasting spits well there's a couple reasons one Food that you cook on the roasting spit does not go bad, okay? As soon as you put it on the roasting spit, as long as it stays on the roasting spit, it does not go bad. It can stay there for two in-game days. It can stay there for 40 in-game days. It's not going to go bad, and it's a good source of food for your character. The second part of it is that good source of food for your character. Going through and making food that you throw over on the roasting spit, I don't know, like some grub parts is also gonna fill up your hunger meter and give you that buff that makes it so your food doesn't go down as quickly because it is considered good food. So using the roasting spit is a very, very good idea for you to go through and make yourself a surplus of food for you to be able to go and explore all these new areas. Exploring means running and fighting. Fighting and running means using more stamina. Using more stamina means using more food. Your food bar is gonna go down faster. So get yourself a whole bunch of food. I would say, like I said, about 10 roasting spits at a minimum will probably do you pretty good. Now, before you guys get all excited and say, well, Sim, grinding up that much food's kind of a pain in the neck. I know what you're saying, but let's face it, going through and getting yourself grub meat is not that hard. And that leads me to number four. Number four is getting yourself grub goop. Now, if you run over here to this area that I'm running over to with your handy dandy shovel, which you can use a tier two shovel for this as well, but you can run right over here and dig yourself up some grubs. All right, and as soon as you dig up grubs, you're gonna need the grub goop anyway. Why are you gonna need grub goop? Question mark smoothies, everybody. Question mark smoothies are the shiznit. They do help you out a ton. So get yourself some question mark smoothies. That way you can make yourself heal a lot faster. Question mark smoothies are super easy to make. Get yourself some grub group, get yourself some clovers, and make yourself some question mark smoothies. Literally, clover smoothies are life. Make yourself a crap load of them. Trust me, you're going to need them. Just go through and make them. Question mark smoothies, one grub goop. Here we go, ready? In we go, where are you? Go in there. All right, cool. Now, I'm literally going to take something stupid like egg corn tops and I'm going to craft and it's going to end up dropping a smoothie right on the ground, obviously. But I now have question mark smoothie somewhere that I can grab wherever I decided to throw it. It's probably down there if I'm being honest. No, it's right there. But I now have question mark smoothies that I can use to heal my character. Okay, so... There is two reasons to go and kill grubs. One, grub meat that you can throw all over on the spit. And there is a piece of it cooked right there. Grab that, go ahead and grub it down. Bada bing, bada boom. Now I have a ton of food back and it's easy to carry around stacks of roasted food. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the next smoothie ingredient and that is muscle sprouts. Muscle sprouts are super duper easy for you to get. They grow inside of the underwater pond dome in here, and you can grab a whole bunch of them all at the same time, and yes, they do respawn. It does take a few in-game days for them to respawn, about eight, but you can come through and grab up a crap ton of muscle sprouts and make yourself beefy smoothies. Now, 
Why beefy smoothies? Beefy smoothies are the ones that you should take a little bit more time and use to make some of the more advanced smoothie recipes, like, you know, human food or falls on the rocks and stuff like that that are going to give you those perks. But why beefy smoothies? Because they heal you twice as much as the previous smoothies as regular grub goop smoothies do. Okay, so go out, grab yourself some muscle sprouts. This is a great area to grab them and get yourself some beefy smoothies. The other helpful thing about this as well is that you can get to this area with nothing not even fin flops are really needed but i would suggest to carry a pair of fin flops if you're going to come over here because it will just help you swim that much faster but really it's an in and out through one simple portal right here when you come out just take a peek for the koi fish to make sure he's not going to sneak up behind you and swallow you and as long as you do that you should be good to go go out get all those smoothie parts and make yourself some more advanced smoothies you're going to need them so that's five number six is going through and getting yourself gum pieces now why am I saying get gum pieces? Because that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when I just told you to go and get grub goop to make question mark smoothies and get the muscle sprouts to make the advanced smoothies. I'm not saying grab the gum pieces in order for you to get smoothies. I'm saying grab the gum pieces because you're going to need gum nuggets in order to make things that are going to be more advanced in the game. Think about it. Gum nuggets are rare. And right now, they're used to make the Salt Morning Star and smoothies, but they are rare. And in the future, you may need them to get even more advanced gear or make some of the more advanced armors. So, grab yourself some gum nuggets. There's, here's three locations for you to go and check. One is going to be right underneath the picnic table. Literally, right here, where my little zoom is right here, this is where a gum nugget is. It is inside of a footprint. The bonus about this one is as soon as you dig up that gum nugget, take out your tier 2 hammer and get yourself a mega milk molar because you deserve it. And then you can use that to upgrade things like storage space or number of arrows that you can carry. So, that one's really helpful. Right here on the end over here, there is another piece of gum that's stuck to the side of the picnic table. You just have to build a very easy way to get up over there. I was just using clover roofs, so just go and get yourself that, or angled grass planks, because you can make a spiral staircase out of angled grass walls as well. And the last one is going to be right over here, underneath the porch. There is a gum piece that's right underneath over here that you can run over and easily grab by just building one small little... Um, ramp more or less and then you could go up there and grab it now you will need a tier two shovel in order to harvest the gum so be careful with that make sure you get yourself a tier two shovel and hail shovels are or black hand shovels are not that hard to make so just go ahead and get yourself one trust me you're going to need it for more things than just gum pieces but get yourself one of those that way you can go through and get it you guys have start to notice that there's a trend of how everything that i'm telling you to get or everything i'm telling you to grind is kind of all coming together in a way that's going to help you grind the other pieces as well higher tier shovel better way to get grubs just saying it's going to help you out so that's six number seven is going to be tier three bug parts why tier three bug parts well let's talk tier three armor for a second we know that everything in this next update is going to be harder and harder and harder they are not adding any more low level things to the game they are only adding things that are more difficult to the game Okay, they're only going to be building things that are going to be more difficult for you to fight, which means having higher tier armor like the crusty roly poly armor or the antlion wide rim armor or just the antlion armor in general is really going to help you out. So make yourself a set of each of these. Test them out. Practice with them. Decide which one is going to fit your playstyle the best. That way you are the most prepared for the update. So grinding out tier 3 parts like antlion parts or roly poly parts is going to help you out. But it's not only armor it's also weapons as well get all three uh, or all four of the um different sets of gear get all four weapons trust me you're going to want all four each of them has their own perk and i will repeat fresh mighty spicy salty this one already comes with salty this one already comes with fresh though spicy on the antlion greatsword because it's gonna help you fight spiders because spiders are weak to slashing and spicy damage so this is gonna help and if we get a new spider in the next update i'm assuming it's gonna follow suit with the weaknesses that the spiders already have so get yourself a spicy antlion greatsword and mighty on the club of the mother demon just because it's gonna do a crap load of damage trust me just get it get yourself a club of the mother demon upgrade it i would also say get yourself some brood mother parts because the brood mother i would say 
is also a tier 3 enemy as well, because she's technically a boss. So go ahead and get these parts as well. Take it yourself a club of the Mother Demon. Do I think that the Mask of the Mother Demon is super worth you getting for this next update? No, this is a completionist item, as well as the Marksman Cap, a completionist item. So do I think you need those? Not really, but go out and get them if you want to. Tier 3 armor, tier 3 weapons definitely are going to be needed. Now, this next thing you guys can hear from my very, very annoying friends that are right over here, and that is, hello, koi fish, um, and that is mosquitoes. <coughs> Why mosquitoes, you may be asking. Well, mosquitoes actually have a couple things that are good for them, other than being the most annoying thing in the game that you can fight. They also come with two perks. One, they make it so you can make a mosquito rapier, and after you upgrade that SOB, it becomes very powerful and a good weapon for lifesteal. So, making a mosquito needle could end up being very, very valuable for you to go out and get. But the more important things is the brat bursts, or I'm sorry, the heal bosses. Heal bosses are great for you. You throw them at the ground and you heal every time. It's super helpful. And if you happen to be playing multiplayer, you could throw one of these down and heal your entire team all at once. It's going to be a more efficient uh, thing than fiber bandages. Not quite as efficient as drinking smoothies, but a heal bossa is an excellent, excellent, excellent thing for you to go and grind out. I know mosquitoes are annoying. Trust me. And with how annoying they are, you probably already have a whole bunch of stuff ready to make heal bosses, but just make yourself a bunch of them. I would say 20 of them would probably be good. Keep them in a chest. Take out as many as you want to take on your adventures with you. Take those with you. You're going to be okay. Just use them to heal you and your entire team. All right. So that's number eight. Number nine is going through and getting yourself a crap load of quartzite. I don't mean a lot. I don't mean a ton. I mean a metric F ton of quartzite. Get a chest, upgrade your stack size, fill the whole chest. Why do I say this? Think about the last update, folks. The last update brought in an all new system to the game that they said is not yet complete, and that is weapon upgrading. Okay? It takes a ton of quartzite in order to upgrade one weapon. So, I would say probably two, three, four hundred quartzite is not out of bounds in this idea. Because what are you going to do if all of a sudden they make it so you can also upgrade, I don't know, something like your armor? Now, in the next update, maybe we're going to get an armor repair station. So, getting yourself some new gear that you can go through and upgrade is going to be important. But what's going to happen if you don't have the upgrade materials because you decided not to, to grind out your quartzite? Guess who didn't listen to Sam? Go grind your quartzite. It's not that hard to grind out. There's excellent locations to get it. Both of the uh, abandoned ant hill and the red ant, red ant hill have a lot of quartzite for you to go through and get for your character. You can also go and explore the haze and get it over there. That's another great area. Just be careful over in the haze because there's a lot of things over there that want to eat your meat. So be careful if you go over in that area. I would suggest sticking to the the abandoned ant hill and the western ant hill. Both of those will really help you gather up a whole bunch of quartzite for your character and the last thing that i'm going to suggest that all you guys go and grind out is going to be salt spicy candy and mints why think about it seriously think about it so far you're able to put all these different perks on these weapons what happens if all of a sudden we get tier 4 weapons folks what happens if we get tier 4 weapons and now we need to go through and add all these different items to and you didn't listen to Sim, so now you don't have any mint pieces, but you want a new fresh weapon. What are you going to do? You can't do anything at that point because you didn't listen. You don't have the items resource, so you're going to have to go gather them now. If you do it now, then you won't have to do it. What happens if they adjust it and make it so, you know, like mint globs no longer take five? What happens if they all of a sudden take 20? Right? Go out, grind out these materials. Trust me, go and get them. The most important one of all, I would say, is probably salt. Getting yourself a lot of salt is going to be helpful because I'm assuming that the new bugs, a lot of them are going to be weak to salt. I'm just saying. I think a lot of them are going to be weak to salt. I think that's going to be the termite weakness. It only makes sense. Right now, the only thing that's weak to salt that we have is the antline. The antline is the only thing that's weak to salt right now. So is it worth your time to go and get up a whole bunch of salt because we're probably going to need salt weapons for going into this next tier area? Yes. Go out, get yourself a bunch of salt, maybe like 50 pieces. There's a really good spot to go and get salt right here, right where my little circle is. Let me actually zoom in. It's actually right here. There's an antlion den right here. If you go over there, you kill that antlion that's guarding it. You go down in there 
excellent mine for salt. Best mine for salt that you can go to. Go there, get yourself some salt. While you're over in the sandbox, look for the shiny things on the ground, aka the buried treasure. Dig up the spicy candy there. For mint pieces, go over here. The ice mints cap or ice ice capped mints box is right here. Otherwise, there's a piece that's down in the bottom of the Western Ant Hill. There's a piece that is down over in the haze, right about right here. And then there's also a piece that is over or a set, a box of them that is over in the trash heap. So you can go over there and get mints from over there as well. But guys, that is all 10 things. That's going to be lights, bombs, food, grub goop, muscle sprouts, gum, bug parts, mosquito parts, salt, and or salt candy parts and spicy parts, right? And quartzite. So go and get all those things, guys. This is going to help you guys out in this next update. Trust me, go and grind these items. It's going to make your next update that much smoother and make it that much more fun because you're not going to be dying all the time and you're not going to have to sit there and worry about grinding things out when all you want to do is explore the brand new area that was added to the game. But guys, that is all the time I've left for this episode. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, hit that like button for me. Let me know you guys want to see more. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to the and leave me a comment down below. And as always, I'll see you guys.